Whether you like it or not, this tiny computer that we keep in our pockets, that for many of us remains powered on 24 hours a day and never more than two feet away from us at any point in time, is probably one of the most sensitive vaults of personal data that we have. It's no longer just a good idea to secure our phones, it is absolutely critical. Welcome to All Things Secured. My name's Josh, and I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsor for this week's video, Trend Micro. I've been using their premium security suite on all my devices lately, including my kids' iPads. And you'll see in this video just how their bundle of services plays an important role in the security of our family's devices. And if you're strapped for time, the Trend Micro mobile security app can easily run an audit of your iPhone and walk you through the most critical changes that you need to make. Now, let's count down these nine ways that you can secure your iPhone right now. The first and lowest hanging fruit is your iPhone passcode. For those of you who, like me, have been wearing masks a lot more often thanks to COVID, I've been typing in my passcode almost as often as using my Face ID. And if you're still using a four-digit passcode, you need to make some changes. Apple now gives us a lot more flexibility in the length and type of passcode that we use. I recommend that you set a numeric passcode that's at least six digits long, if not longer, or if you really want an inconvenient but secure code, you can do an alphanumeric phrase, which basically means you're not just using numbers, but also letters and symbols. To change your passcode, go into your settings app, scroll down to find face ID and passcode. You'll have to enter your passcode to get in. Click on change passcode and then click passcode options. It's the custom codes you see here that you want to choose in order to secure your iPhone. Another critical change in this passcode settings has to do with your lock screen. For iPhones, your lock screen actually poses a little bit more of a security risk than you might realize. For example, if I were to steal your phone and you've allowed the control center to be accessed while locked, I can easily swipe down and turn on airplane mode to make sure you can't track your stolen phone. Thankfully, this is an easy fix with the face ID and passcode settings. And then for me, as you can see here, I've decided that the only things I wanna be able to do on lock screen are access Siri and reply with message. Everything else requires the phone to be unlocked. Next, we're looking at our location and Bluetooth permissions. I've been surprised by the number of apps that request permission to these features for what appears to be no apparent reason to me at least. For example, when I checked my Bluetooth permissions, I saw that the LinkedIn app had somehow requested and given permission to use my iPhone Bluetooth connection. Apparently, LinkedIn uses this for a find other members nearby feature, but it's just ridiculous. I'm not gonna use that. So that was a quick and easy opt-out. Now, if you go into your settings app and find privacy, scroll down and find that, you can audit both your Bluetooth and location permissions. Now, Bluetooth, as you see here, is just a simple yes or no setting. But location, if you go back there, allows you to choose from three sharing options. Never, ask next time, and then while using the app. And you see these gray and purple icons next to some of the apps? This shows you which apps have logged or used your GPS location in the past 24 hours. So take a couple minutes and look through here, decide which apps really need access to your Bluetooth and location settings. There really shouldn't be that many. The next part of your mobile security is something I preach for anybody using any device, a password manager. On average, each of us has more than 150 online accounts for which we have to keep a username and password. Personally, I think I have somewhere upwards of 350 at this point. The only way to manage that number of accounts is by either reusing the same password in multiple places or by using a password manager. While it may seem risky for those of you who don't know much about it, it's actually a very secure way to create, store, and retrieve high quality passwords. Whenever I log in to any app or account on my iPhone, I click right here where you see it says passwords in the middle, and my username and unique password are filled in automatically after Face ID is confirmed. There are plenty of password manager apps on the market today, but when you subscribe to the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite, it includes a password manager that's easy to use and it syncs between all of your devices. Then when I jump into my settings, you're gonna find password, and then we're looking for autofill passwords. That's where you can choose which password manager will autofill on the logins when you click that password. This next tip for securing your iPhone 
It may seem weird, but hear me out. Go to your home screen, find the Facebook app on your phone, and then tap and hold until you get a menu option to pop up. You wanna click remove app and then delete app. I'm kind of joking here, but also kind of not. There are some apps like Instagram or various messaging apps that are difficult to use without your phone. But others like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter can honestly be accessed just as easily on your internet browser. And the Facebook app is notorious for attempting to track everything you do, including location. Now, newer versions of iOS are taking a very proactive step against apps that track your data and are forcing them to make a request to do so but there's a lot that we don't even realize that we give over sometimes. So no matter whether you use the app or your browser to access these social media sites, doing a separate audit of your privacy settings is important. And this is really beyond the scope of this video, but I did use the Trend Micro Security app to scan my settings, and they told me which privacy settings put me at the highest risk for both Facebook and Twitter. If you've never heard of two-factor authentication, it's basically a second way beyond your password to verify that you are who you say you are. In the case of your iPhone's iCloud account, this is a way to secure anything that you store in the iCloud, including uh, photos, contacts, messages, and a whole lot more. There's really no good reason not to turn on two-factor authentication for your phone. So to check and see if it's on for you, go into your settings app and click on your name here at the very top. It's here that you're gonna click on password and security and then find two-factor authentication. If that says on, then you're golden. If it says off, you'll wanna go through the process of turning this on. Did you know that when you share an image with somebody taken by your iPhone camera, it often comes with GPS coordinates of exactly where that photo was taken within about a meter. Thankfully, there are many places, such as Facebook, where this, what's known as EXIF data, is automatically removed. But in other cases, such as if you were to post it on your own website, somebody could actually determine the exact location using the hidden data of that photo. Now, there are two things you could do here. For those who see no good reason for having GPS data associated with your photos, you can turn it off completely. Just head into your settings app, click on Privacy, Scroll down and click on Location Services, sorry, at the top, and then scroll down and find the Camera app. If you set this to Never, the GPS data won't be recorded. Or you could just turn off the precise location so that it's not exact coordinates. For those of you who like location data for your photos, you can simply remove the data when you share the photo. For example, when I click Share This Photo, you see here on the top that I can click Options and then turn off the location data. It will now share the photo without any of that GPS data on it. Finally, while this may not apply to everybody and it's worth its own video, I'd like to touch on device security for our kids. It's important to go through your kids' devices and make these kind of changes for them since they won't be doing it themselves. But it's also worth securing the device of younger children by controlling what they can or can't see or access. Some of this can be done via Apple Family, but I have to be honest that setting that up and using Apple Family has been incredibly frustrating for me. Other than just limiting what apps my kids can download and keeping them from making unauthorized purchases, it's really been no help to me at all. And that's where the Trend Micro Family app has given me a lot more control and safeguards for the kinds of YouTube's videos they watch, what kind of images they see, and even what they search for online. I can easily access reports of how they're using their devices, change the security settings, and manage the different family devices that we have using one app on my phone. Now, you don't wanna to wait to make these kind of changes to your iPhone settings. And if you need more help with maintaining your privacy and changing these settings, I recommend you give the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite a try. It includes a VPN, a password manager, mobile security, and dark web monitoring bundled together at a price that's certainly cheaper than if you were to get all of these apps separately. Use the link in the description to get a special discount to secure 10 devices in your home. And as always, I appreciate your support in the form of a like and commenting on this video. Here's to keeping all things secured.